Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to differentiate uh, parametric uh, equations. So in particular I'm going to show you how to work out the first derivative. So let me show you how to work out the first derivative. So by first derivative I mean dy over dx. Okay, so let me take a red pen ruler underline this. So if you're given parametric equations, so if you have x in terms of a third variable um, t, for example, and y in terms of a third variable t again, okay? So if you're given parametric equations in terms of a third variable, which I'm naming as t, okay? So to calculate, dy over dx. So in order to work out the first derivative, we need to use a chain rule. Okay? So by chain rule, to calculate dy over dx, we need to calculate dy over dt and then multiply that by dt over dx. Okay? So we need to use a chain rule in order to work out the first derivative dy over dx. So, let me highlight that result. So, let me take it forward with some examples. So let me show you uh, how this uh, result is applied. So in this case, example number one, let me take a red pen, underline this. So the question is to find dy over dx. And here's part A. So x is equal to 2t squared, y is equal to t cubed. So according to this chain rule, to calculate dy over dx, we need dy over dt, okay? and we need dt over dx. Now to work out dt over dx, okay, dt over dx is one over dx over dt. So in other words, we need to calculate dx over dt first and take the reciprocal of that to work out dt over dx, okay? So that is how you would work out uh, dt over dx. So back to the example, to work out dy over dx, my step one would be to work out dx over dt and dy over dt. So let me write down the step. So find dx over dt and dy over dt. So that's step number one. So looking at our given equations, x is equal to 2t squared, so dx by dt, when I differentiate with respect to t, I'm going to have 4t, okay? Let's also work out dy by dt. So y equals t cubed, so if I differentiate with respect to t, I'll have 3t squared. Okay, so that is step number one. Work out dx by dt and dy by dt. Okay, now let's take a fresh page, and here is step two. Now, step number two so if we go back to our chain rule, we need dt over dx, and remember, dt over dx is one over dx by dt, okay? Now, we know dx by dt, we calculated that in step one, we had an answer of 40, so bear that in mind. So in this case, uh, dt over dx, that's one over dx by dt. So remember, dx by dt, we had 40, so it's one over 40, okay? 
So that takes us to the final step. Final step is step three. So remember our chain rule, let's have a look. dy over dx, remember, is dy over dt times dt over dx, okay? So in step number three, by chain rule, dy over dx, that's dy over dt times dt over dx. So now it's a case of substituting um, our results from the previous steps. dy by dt, so if we have a quick look, we had 3t squared. So 3t squared multiplied by dt over dx, that's 1 over 4t. Okay, so we can cancel one of the t's and the final answer will be 3t divided by 4. So 3t times 1 is 3t uh, divided by the 4 below. Okay. So here are the steps in order to work out dy over dx given parametric equations and we use the chain rule, remember. Okay. So let's try another one. So let's do the same for part B. So in part B, x is equal to 3t squared plus 4t plus 1. And y is equal to t cubed plus t squared. So, step number one. So, remember in step number one, so if you remember from the previous example, we need dx by dt and dy over dt. Let's calculate those. So, dx by dt. So, if I differentiate 3t squared, we'll have 6t. If we differentiate 4t, that's simply 4. So that is dx by dt done. And let's calculate dy over dt as well. So if I differentiate t cubed, we'll have 3t squared. And if we differentiate t squared, we'll have 2t. Okay? So that takes us to step number two. So remember, in the previous example, step number two is to work out dt over dx and dt over dx is 1 over dx by dt. So let's have a go here. So dt over dx that is 1 over dx by dt. So it's a 1 over and dx by dt from step 1 we had 6t plus 4. Okay, so that completes step two. Now the last step, step three, and in the previous example, remember, that's the application of the chain rule. So by chain rule, so dy by dx, remember, according to the rule, is dy over dt times dt over dx. So dy by dt we had 3t squared plus 2t. So 3t squared plus 2t. Let's keep that in a bracket. Multiplied by dt over dx from step 2. It's 1 over 6t plus 4. Okay. Now we can simplify this even more. So let me simplify this. So dy over dx is going to be, now if I factorise both the numerator and the denominator. So starting with the numerator, I can take out a common factor of t to leave me with 3t plus 2. 
And as you can observe from the denominator, if I take out a common factor of 2, I also have 3t plus 2, okay? By doing that, I can cancel the 3t plus 2 terms, um, and that as a result will give us t over 2. So that's going to be the solution to this problem, part b, okay? Now, let's continue further. Let's do an example of calculating the tangent um, and normal for parametric uh, equations. So let me continue on the reverse and let me call this example uh, number two. So let me show you how to work out uh, the equations of the tangent and normal for a set of parametric equations. So find the tangent and normal so our parametric equations so the equation for x x equals t squared minus 1 and the equation for y y is equal to 2t cubed at the point where t equals 2 so we need to calculate the equations of both the tangent and normal to x equals t squared minus 1 y is equal to 2t cubed at the t value which is given as 2. Now let's think about this. To work out the tangent and the normal we need the x and y coordinates. So we've been given this t value. To work out the x and y coordinates that's simple. All we're going to do is replace the t by 2. Okay? In both of these equations. So when t equals 2, let's do a quick replacement. So firstly, let's calculate x. x is equal to t, which is 2, squared minus the 1. And if we simplify, 2 squared is 4, minus the 1 gives us an x coordinate of 3. Okay? Let's do the same. Let's calculate y. And let's replace the t by 2 here. So y is equal to 2 in 2, t which is 2 cubed. And if we simplify this, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 2, 16. Okay? So that is our coordinate. So our coordinate um, is. 3 and the y coordinate corresponding to the x value is 16. Okay? For the tangent and normal, remember, we also need dy over dx, so we need to calculate the first derivative. So that isn't a problem now because we know that we need to apply the chain rule in order to work out the first derivative for parametric equations. Okay? So let's use the knowledge that we've gathered earlier to work out dy over dx, okay? So calculating x and y is our step one, okay? And in the next step, let's find dy over dx. So x is t squared minus one. Remember the stages for dy by dx. First, we need dx by dt and dy by dt. So this is the first uh, part of the process for dy over dx. So x is t squared minus 1. When I differentiate, we're going to get 2t. Okay? y is 2t cubed. And if we differentiate, dy by dt will be 6t squared. Okay? So dt over dx. That's 1 over dx over dt. So it's going to be 1 over dx by dt. We had 2t. So it's 1 over 2t. Okay? So in the final stage, to calculate dy over dx, we need to apply the chain rule. So by chain rule. So remember the rule dy by dx 
that's dy over dt times dt over dx. Okay, so let me continue on a fresh page. So dy over dx, so let's have a look. That is equal to, so if we remind ourselves, dy by dt, we had 6t squared. So let's include that, 6t squared multiplied by, and dt over dx, we had 1 over 2t. So let's include that also, 1 divided by 2t. Okay, so as you can see from here, I can cancel the 2 with the 6, so 2 goes into 6 3 times, and I can cancel the t with t squared, so that should give us 3t for dy over dx, okay? So that's step number 2. Now that we have dy over dx, remember to work out the tangent, we need the gradient of the tangent, okay? So to work out the gradient of the tangent, so if we look at dy over dx, dy over dx is in terms of t, okay? So when you work out dy over dx given parametric equations, okay? They will be in terms of the third variable. So our dy over dx is in terms of t. So to work out the gradient of the tangent, we need to replace the t value given, which is two, in dy over dx. So gradient of the tangent, and I like to name my gradient of the tangent m1. So m1, the gradient of the tangent, if I replace the t value two in dy over dx, I'll have three into t, which is two, so m1 will be 3 into 2 being 6. Okay, so that's the gradient of our tangent. Now for the equation of the tangent. So we have the x and y coordinates, 3 and 16. We have the gradient of the tangent being 6. So to work out the equation of the tangent at the point 3 and 16, we can use the formula y minus y1, that's equal to m into x minus x1. So since a tangent is a straight line, you can use the formula for the equation of a straight line. So in this formula, x1 and y1 are the coordinates of the point that the line, or in this case the tangent, passes through. So the coordinates are 316. And m in this formula is the gradient so gradient meaning, in this case, the gradient of the tangent, and we work that out to be 6. Okay? So now it's the case of replacement. So if I replace the data into the equation, we'll have y minus y1 being 16. That's equal to m, which is 6, into x minus, and x1 is 3. So if I expand the brackets, y minus 16 on the left, that is equal to 6 times x, which is 6x. 6 times minus 3 is minus 18. And if I take the minus 16 to the right hand side, y therefore will be 6x minus 2. Okay? Now, we have the equation of the tangent, so one part of the task is complete, but you, we also need the equation of the normal, okay? Now, from our theory of tangents and normals, the tangent is perpendicular to the normal, and if two lines are perpendicular, the product of the gradients equate to minus one, okay? So we need to use that result to work out the gradient of the normal. So in the next step, let's call this step number five. So since the tangent is perpendicular to the normal, 
that implies that the product of the gradients, so I called my tangent gradient M1, so my normal gradient I normally use M2, okay? So I use M2 for my normal gradient. So the product of the gradients of the tangent and normal equate to minus one, since the tangent is perpendicular to normal. So the gradient of the normal M2 will be minus one over M1, okay? So using this result, gradient of the normal, so M2, that is minus one divided by, and the gradient of the tangent from a previous step is six. So it's minus one over six, okay? So we have the gradient of the normal, minus one over six, the tangent and the normal pass through the same point, so the point has having coordinates 316. So we have everything that we need now to work out the equation of the normal. So since the normal is a straight line also, the equation of the normal at the point 316, so we're going to use the formula for the equation of a straight line, y minus y1 is m into x minus x1. So in this formula, x1 and y1 are the coordinates of the point that the normal pass through. So both the normal and the tangent, remember, pass through the same point, that being 316. And m in this formula is the gradient of the normal. Gradient of the normal we worked out as minus one over six. So here's our data. And if we do a replacement, we're going to have y minus y1, which is 16, that's equal to m, which is minus 1 over 6, into x minus x1, which is 3. Okay? And if I expand the brackets, I'll have y minus 16 on the left. And on the right, be careful. So minus one over six times x is minus one over six x. Minus one over six times a minus three is plus one over two. Okay, so be careful when you multiply your terms. And if we carry the minus 16 from the left to the right hand side. So let me continue here. So why therefore, so if I move the minus 16 from the left hand side to the right hand side, we're gonna have y is equal to minus one over six x. So minus one over six x. And half plus the 16, that's gonna give us 33 over two, okay? So plus 33 over two. So that should be the final answer for the equation of the normal, okay? So here are the steps in order to work out the tangent and normal given parametric equations. If you have the value of t, remember you can use this to work out the x and y coordinates, but also to work out um, the gradient uh, of the tangent. Okay, so you need the value of your parameter to work out the gradient of the tangent. In some problems, you have your parametric equations and you'll either have the x or the y value. However, if you're given parametric equations with an x or y value, you need the t value also to work out specifically the gradient of your tangent, okay? Right, let me go through another example. So, let me continue on the reverse. So, this is example three. We'll take a red pen and a ruler, underline this, okay? So, in this example, we're gonna work out the equation of the tangent. So, find the equation of the tangent. And we've been given these parametric equations, x is equal to the square root 
Okay, square root of t squared plus 3 and y is equal to 3t plus 4, okay, at the point with coordinates 2 and 7. So, remember in the previous example, example number 2, we had the parametric equations for x and y and the value of the parameter and we used the value of the parameter to work out um, the gradient of the tangent using dy over dx. So generally dy over dx will often be in terms of the parameter so you need the parameter value to work out the gradient of the tangent. Now back to this example I have the parametric equations for x and y but I have the x and y coordinates. I don't have the value of the parameter t. Okay? So first things first, in step number one, we need to calculate the value of t. Now, it's up to you. You can replace the x value of 2 into the first equation to work out t or the y value which is 7 into the second equation to work out t okay I'm going to use the y value so it's faster in order to work out uh, the t value so when y is equal to 7 if I replace the y value in this y equation I'm going to have 7 for y that's equal to 3t plus 4 on the right hand side so if I rearrange 3t will be 7 minus this 4 okay which is 3 and the t value is going to be 1 so that is the value of t okay so we need that to remember in order to work out the gradient of our tangent so in step number 2 Let's work out dy over dx. So we need dy over dx, the first derivative, to work out the gradient of our tangent. So x is the square root of t squared plus 3. So that's given. Let me rewrite that as t squared plus 3 to the power half. Okay? Now, to differentiate such a term... Remember, in one of my previous videos, more specifically the video titled Function of a Function or Chain Rule, okay, we went through this result. So let me remind you, if y equals a ux to the power of n, then dy by dx will be na ux to the power n minus 1 times d by dx of u okay so remember we only apply this result if a is a constant and if we have a power okay ux remember is any function involving x but i also said in a video don't memorize this result so what this result is trying to say is multiply by the power so n times a is na take away one from the power so n take away 1. Then you need to multiply by d by dx of u. u is this term. Okay? So u is the term um, associated with the power. So we only apply this result, everyone, if the term in front a is a constant. So if you're unfamiliar with this result, be sure to check out the video titled Function of a Function Rule. I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Okay, so be sure to check that video out. Let me apply the rule here dx by dt. So remember the idea first, I multiply by the power, so power is half. I have a constant in front, so I can apply the rule. So half times the constant one in front is half into the t squared plus 3 so our t squared plus 3 term is our u term then according to the rule take away 1 from the power so it's a half minus 1 
okay? Then you need to multiply that by the derivative, so it's d by dt in this case, since we're differentiating with respect to t. So the derivative of u, u is t squared plus 3. Okay? So further to that, let's simplify. So dx by dt. So if I differentiate t squared plus 3 here, we're going to have 2t. Okay? So 2t times half is t. So 2t divided by 2 is t into the t squared plus 3 and half minus 1 is minus half. So you could rewrite that as t over and minus half power is the same as 1 over the square root. So I'm going to write that as t divided by the square root of t squared plus 3. Okay? So that is dx by dt. Now, we also need, as part of the first stage for dy over dx, we also need dy over dt. So y, given in the problem, is 3t plus 4. Let's work out dy by dt. So if I differentiate 3t plus 4, that's straightforward, we're going to have 3. Okay? So that takes us to the next step, okay? So the next part of the stage is to calculate, so if we go back to the previous example, we need to calculate dt over dx, remember, in order to help us work out dy over dx, okay? So let's work out dt over dx. So dt over dx, is 1 over dx by dt. So in this case, dt divided by dx, that is 1 over, and dx by dt we had from earlier, t over the root t squared plus 3. So let's do the replacement. So it's t divided by the root t squared plus 3. So if we take the reciprocal of this, uh, we're going to have the root of t squared plus 3 divided by t. Okay, so that is dt over dx. So we have dt over dx and we have dy over dt. So we have everything that we need to work out dy by dx. So that takes us to the first third stage. So by the chain rule, dy by dx, that is dy over dt times dt over dx. So let's replace the results that we had from the previous steps. dy over dt Let's remind ourselves that was 3 from an earlier stage times dt over dx. We had that result here. It's the root of t squared plus 3 divided by t. And if we simplify that, we're going to end up with 3 into the root t squared plus 3 divided by t. Okay? So that is dy over dx in terms of t. So let's remind ourselves, so in the earlier example, in the next step we need the gradient of the tangent. And remember, you need to use your parameter value, replace your parameter value in dy over dx to work out uh, the gradient of the tangent. So coming back to this problem here, our parameter value we worked out in step number one we had the value of one so let me put t equals one into our dy over dx so that takes us to step number three so the gradient of the tangent 
as you know, I like to call my tangent M1. So M1 is our tangent gradient. So if I put the value of T being 1 into dy by dx, I'll get 3 into the root of T squared. So RT is 1, so 1 squared plus the 3 divided by T, which is 1. Okay. And if we simplify this further, 1 squared plus 3 is 4, root of 4 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 1, still 6. Okay? So we have the gradient of the tangent, so that's our m1, and we also have, given in the question, the point 27. So our tangent passes through the point 27. 27 relates to the x and y coordinates. Okay, so we have everything that we need to work out the equation of the tangent. So let's work out the equation of the tangent at the point 27. So since the tangent is a straight line, remember, let's use the equation for the straight line. And that is y minus y1 is m in 2 x minus x1. So in the formula, x1 and y1 are 2, 7. That point has been given. m is the gradient of our tangent being 6. Okay? So it's just a matter of replacing the data in this formula. So y minus y1, which is 7. That's equal to m, which is 6, into x minus x1, which is 2. And if we expand the brackets, y minus 7 on the left-hand side will be equal to 6 times x, which is 6x, minus 6 times 2, which is 12. And if I take the minus 7 to the right-hand side, so it's 6x and minus 12 plus the 7 when moved when moving the minus 7 to the right hand side it's plus 7 minus 12 plus 7 is minus 5 so that is and all that should be your equation for the tangent okay so that completes this example and this is the method to calculate the equation of the tangent given your parametric equations but also uh, given, given the x and y coordinates. So although you have the x and y coordinates, you do need to calculate the parameter value by replacing the x or y value in either of your two equations. So if you use your x value and replace that into the first equation, that is okay. You could also replace the y value into the second equation. I use that approach because it's faster. It's simpler, okay? So that ends these examples. I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, a like will be very much appreciated.